ओके सो गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन सो टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द इंडो पाकिस्तान वॉर्स दिस आर नॉट जस्ट बैटल्स बट ऑल्सो द स्टोरीज दट आर स्टिल अफेक्टिंग अस टूडे इट्स लाइक गोइंग बैक इन टू द टाइम टू अंडरस्टैंड वाई दिस टू नेशंस हैव बीन इन अ प्रेटी इंटेंस कॉन्फ्लिक्ट सिंस द पार्टीशन ऑफ ब्रिटिश इंडिया इन नाइनटीन फोर्टी सेवन सो लेटस एक्सप्लोर द हिस्ट्रीज एंड स्टोरीज दट हैव लेफ्ट द रिमार्क ऑन साउथ एशिया as we already know that india and pakistan have originated from common subcontinent and they share linguistic cultural geographical and economic links but their relationship have been very complex due to number of historical and political events and india have always remained in conflict with pakistan as uh, ever since the two nations have been created after the partition of british india in 1947 india and pakistan have fought four wars in the year 1947 the 1965 the 1971 and the kargil war 1999 so now first let us discuss about the indo pakistan war 1947 uh, india pakistan war 1947 is also known as the first war of kashmir because after the partition of british india in 1947 the princely states were asked to join either india or pakistan or to remain independent the princely state jammu and kashmir was ruled by hindu hindu ruler maharaja hari singh and maharaja hari singh in the face of dilemma was not able to decide whether to join india because his cultural values and also his ideologies align with the secular principles of india or to join islamic state the pakistan because majority of the population in jammu and kashmir region were muslims or to remain independent but in october 1947 the tribal forces the pashtun tribal forces have invaded the jammu and kashmir region which was supported by the pakistani army and they started to defeat the state forces and that is when maharaja hari singh have approached india for its assistance then the prime minister of india pandit jawaharlal nehru have agreed to come to its rescue only if he accepts the accession of kashmir to india and he signed the instrument of accession, accession and immediately after the agreement the indian government have sent its troops to disputed region and a large war broke out after a long war the india want to resolve the issue so it went to united nation security council and then the united security united nation security council have intervened and it dictated cease fire it also passed a resolution 47 to mediate the conflict between the two nations over jammu and kashmir region and it also proposed a plebiscite but the plebiscite never took place under this resolution india got two third of the jammu and kashmir region the jammu the kashmir valley and the ladakh region and they were asked to administer this india was asked to administer this re- these three regions and also to maintain the law and order and kashmir got one third of the jammu and kashmir region the azad kashmir and gilgit uh, balistan and they were asked to withdraw forces from the indian administered kashmir region and later india got victorious uh, because it has succeeded in defending a big part of the disputed territory and after that pakistan renamed the territories that it occupied as uh, azad kashmir but india does not recognize this a uh, claim but it refers the occupied territories by kashmir as pakistan occupied kashmir and coming to the indo pakistan war 1965 the indo pakistan war 1965 is also uh, known as the second war of kashmir as we already know that many border disputes were going on between india and pakistan and kashmir conflict is one among them but apart from uh, kashmir region the pakistan have all also started to claim some of the territories in run of kutch in gujarat and that is when the british prime minister harald wilson have intervened and set up a tribunal uh, and the later with verdict which saw in 1968 the pakistan have been awarded 780 square kilometers of the run of kutch in gujarat but here the main purpose of the pakistan was to draw the attention of indian armor away from the punjab and kashmir regions towards kutch and after the success in run of kutch the indian uh, the pakistan believed that in uh, the indian army would not be able to defend against a quick military campaign in kashmir region and the pakistan was also been supported by the us it uh, the us is uh, aiding pakistan with its military support and pakistan also believed that the people 
of Kashmir are discontented with the Indian rule, Indian government rule, and they believe that they could ignite a resistance movement. So the Pakistani army have entered, the, they crossed the ceasefire line and entered the Indian administered Kashmir region disguised as Kashmiri locals. The code name that has been given to this operation was Operation Gibraltar. But the Operation Gibraltar, uh, however, ended unsuccessfully because the locals uh, who, were above, uh, who, who did not revolt against our Indian government have reported the Indian authorities about the Pakistani soldiers, the infiltrators. And then the India retaliated and occupied some, part, some territories of the Kashmir, Pakistan occupied Kashmir. To counter attack this, the Pakistanis have launched another operation, Grand Slam, to, uh, to capture the Akhnur in Jammu region. But the Pakistanis again failed. Here again in the United Nations Security Council have intervened and they started ceasefire negotiations in 1966. In this, the US and USSR have also participated in the negotiations because they were worried about the tensions arising in the South Asian region. And then after uh, much difficulty, uh, the war concluded with Tashkent Agreement in which the both nations after a bilateral agreement was uh, made between uh, the two nations to restore the economic and diplomatic uh, uh, relations. And the major failure that India faced in this war was the failure of intelligence bureau because, it's because of its lack of preparedness and bad performance. It could not uh, detect the undeclared war of Pakistan. So a research and analysis uh, wing was formed in the later 1968s. And now, uh, bec but the pa uh, India got victorious because Pakistan's aim, the liberation of Kashmir, did not happen. And coming to the uh, third war, the Indo-Pakistan War 1971, unlike other wars, this war is not about <coughs> Kashmir. This war is about the Bangladesh liberation. Uh, as we all know that after partition of India, two dominions were formed, India and Pakistan. And Pakistan have two territories, East Pakistan and West Pakistan. East Pakistan, due to the language differences and also the cultural differences and economic disparities between the two, re two regions, they always felt marginalized and they wanted autonomy. And then the general elections held in 1970s. The Awami League Party got clear majority. Awami <coughs> League Party, which had risen to power, have been also aspiring to lead the civilian government in Pakistan. But the army was not ready to transfer the power to the League, Aw Awami League Party. So the Pakistani army have started an operation, Operation Searchlight in March 1971. And it murdered all the Bengali intellectuals on a large scale. And uh, the, uh, the, Rehman, the, uh, the party head of the Awami League Party declared the independence of East Pakistan because he felt that the army is not going to transfer the power to this party. So uh, a guerrilla war started between the East Pakistan and West Pakistan, the Bangladesh Liberation Forces Mukti Bahi. And the whole war is going on in the Pakistan region. But what is the role of India in this war? The, uh, and after the war has been started, uh, in order to escape the persecutions, the many refugees have reached India on a large scale. At first, India have supported with its assistance, like uh, food, and, uh, the, like providing food and shelter. But after, uh, but Pakistan believed that India is sending its arm, arms to Mukti Bahini Bangladesh Liberation Forces in order to uh, help Mukti Bahini uh, Bengal Libera Bangladesh Liberation Forces to fight against Pakistan. So it launched an attack in the western region of India in 1971, and you know uh, so. That is when the Indian government have uh, supported the Bangladesh, the uh, liberation forces, and they fought against Pakistan and have defeated Pakistan. And India have captivated 93,000 soldiers in this war and they captivated them for almost an year. In this uh, war, the Bangladesh finally got liberated. And after that, the Shimla agreement was signed in the year 1972 in which the both the nations have agreed to dispute, uh, dissolve, I mean, defuse the tensions and resolve the disputes by peaceful means. It also established a line of control in Jammu and Kashmir region as a de facto border. 
between the two nations and that is the Indo-Pakistan War 1907 and finally the fourth war, the Indo-Pakistan War 1999, the Kargil War. The Indo-Pakistan War uh, 1999 was named as Kargil War because most of the war have been confined to the Kargil region. And after 1971, the Indian Pakistan have uh, reduced conflicts and tensions were reduced up to some extent. But in 1990s, due to the Lahore Declaration that was signed in 1999, uh, in order to diffuse the tensions between the two nations after the nuclear test in 1998, and also the separatist activities that were taking place in Kashmir in the year nine uh, and also in the ni during 1990s the Pakistani soldiers have started in uh, uh, entering the Indian administered Kashmir the Kargil region as uh, Kashmiri militants that is when the locals uh, discovered the Kashmiri militants and they have informed the authorities when they have informed the authorities the Indian army have set up patrolling units but due to the inadequate information in the initial uh, initial time, the army could not uh, know like how many uh, members of infiltrators, how many number of infiltrators were entering the region. So uh, many Indian soldiers have been captivated by Pakistani soldiers and they're tortured. That is when our Indian government have uh, launched the Operation Vijay, in which the Indian government have uh, Indian army along with the Indian forces have fought against Pakistan and have captured the Tiger Hills and the Dras region. But due to the international pressure and also the pressure from United States, the Pakistan had to withdraw its forces and that is how the Kargil war concluded. In this war, the G8 nations, the EU, the USA and also the Asian, Asian nations have supported India, depicting India as a peaceful and responsible nation in the international order. Like, uh, as we have discussed all the wars, uh, and one, out of all, the major conflict in the three wars was Kashmir dispute. The conflict and insurgency have not yet resolved. After this, despite India's continuous efforts at forging and maintaining goodly, good relations, neighborly relations with Pakistan, India failed repeatedly because the Pakistan sponsorships and continuous involvement in the proxy wars in the Kashmir Valley and also regular ceasefire violations makes it impossible to believe that Pakistan is seriously interested in maintaining peace. So, India and Pakistan, the relationship between them is unfortunately unpredictable. Finally, I would like to conclude by a statement that uh, our external affairs minister, Dr. S. J. Shankar, have recently responded in an interview with a news agency when asked about Pakistan. He said that what Pakistan was trying to do is, not now, but over multiple decades, was really to use cross-border terrorism to bring India to table. He also added that it's not a case that we won't deal with the neighbor. After all, at the end of the day, a neighbor is a neighbor. But it is that we will not deal on the basis of terms that they set, where the practice of terrorism is deemed as legitimate and effective in order to bring you to the table. Hence, it would be naive to imagine that the bilateral relationships between India and Pakistan could improve in the future. Thank you.